When you see someone writing a song a day or two songs a day, you, you, you kind of shake your head and say, this isn't normal. I'm out here in Fruton, Washington, where two young musicians, Don and Joe Emerson, are trying to make it to the top. But before that, it's a lot of hard work to do. on a small farm. You did everything, you did everything that you do on the farm pretty much. Big fence. Change pipes. Right after that, if we gotta go live, well, we gotta go do it. They had to do their chores and all that, but I seen uh, the interest they took in the music. I think it started with Donnie becoming interested in guitar. Uh, eventually, I got on the drums. And we was getting the recognition from the kids at school when we played uh, basketball games yeah. and stuff. Thirteen kids in my class. How many kids were in your class, Joe? Eighteen. <laughs> Fruitland's a small town, about 70 miles northwest of Spokane. It's a service station and the post office all in one, pretty protected from outside uh, influences. We never really bought any records or anything. I remember we got a tractor that had a radio in it. Mm -hmm. And you're running the track, you're not running it for two hours. You're running it for some length of time. But, and I would picture myself doing those songs. Mm -hmm. you know? I got into Smokey Robinson. Uh, Hall and Oates was always a big thing, and obviously Marvin Gaye. They say, man, Donnie, you're just a funky son of a gun. <laughs> How were you connected to black music? You gotta remember, we're isolated. Yeah, I don't think we really knew of the band. You or know? Who they, were they black or white? After we did the first recording in Spokane, then it came to our thought, well, maybe we should just do this on our own. I was a type of a person that uh, tried to support my kids. So I said, well, I'll just We'll just build you a, a studio to, to practice in. This building came about right around 1977 on our family farm. And the whole building has a carpet on all the walls. This was the control room. We're in here right now. This is the control room. And we were really blessed to have really good quality instruments. That helped a lot. We spent a lot of money, probably we shouldn't have. Probably cost $100,000 around the time back then. But you just can't hardly help yourself but say, man, I believe in this. Mom and Dad had a big influence, and we couldn't have done it without their support. They spent a lot of time in the studio, hours upon hours. I, I never told them to practice. They just practice all the time. That was their love. I was so engulfed in what I was doing, the tones, setting the equalizers and everything. I could just do anything I wanted to do without anybody bothering me. The songs were done in layers. You would lay a part down and you just play to it. And that felt good, so let's just add another part to it. There's a few tunes Don's doing all solely on his own. He's even doing the drums. started um, acquiring a, a handful of tunes and thought, well, maybe we should do an album. There's only two hands there, but there's two heads. <laughs> you know, and I'm going like, and I, you know, to me, I'm going, yeah, that is kind of tricky when you think about it. <laughs> I think I look good. I really do look good. Donnie was the guy behind the idea on the suit design. He thought we should have something styled a bit like Elvis with a high collar. Did I, I, <laughs> that was your idea. Huh? It was? Yes. It really was. Mm -hmm. It was fashionable. Yeah, we got to wear these again, definitely. The good old days. I remember the first time we got it done and took it up to the school. They didn't think nothing of it. <laughs> When you do an album like that, you think, oh wow, I just did an album. Mm -hmm. And everybody's gonna be amazed with this album. You see? 
they weren't. <laughs> they weren't. I mean, <laughs> not a whole lot happened to that record. It just, just kind of it got made. It, it got, got shelved. It just kind of sat there. We were quite naive about what we were going to do. We just thought that, well, I suppose they're going to call us. And <laughs> it never happened. We just had other things in our thoughts and stuff, and being we still young kids. I know we made some mistakes, but I, I'm not sorry that we done it, because I seen the results what we was getting, uh, and it was great. It was just complete creativity and freedom. It really wasn't our album. It was something that was just supposed to happen. Now it gets it gets to go out for everybody to hear right. it. And that makes me really feel good. It's almost like the song never ends. It just kind of keeps going.